Um, four test number categories. You guys should love these numbers, and again, they will become second nature to you. These are super important and helpful and awesome. And I didn't know these when I took the test. It was pointed out to me, actually, um, by another GRE instructor, and I, 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 my jaw dropped. I'm like, that is amazing. Um, so these four number categories, the reason why, so these are essentially exhaustive. And the reason they're exhaustive, what I mean when I say that, is if you've tested these, I always feel this uncertainty, like, what if there's another number out there that I just didn't pick, right? And that makes it go to D. Well, if you pick one number from each of these categories, that shouldn't be possible. It is in a few cases, like if you're comparing like weird higher order polynomials, like x cubed and x to the fourth or something that can happen, because they do like dips and stuff. For the most part, the GRE doesn't test any of that. The GRE test very, like I said, the math's very simple. The reason why these numbers are so important is because they all have very unique arithmetic properties. And they all have different arithmetic properties. They add, multiply, divide, or whatever, sort of in opposite ways. So the first two you want to test, oh, and by the way, on a lot of questions, you won't be able to test most of these. So there, when I said x is greater than 1, you would only be able to test uh, positive numbers. Well, I guess positive, well, I need So the first one is 1 and 0. If you have some variable, so a lot of times you're just plugging in to like check things, if you have a variable, Plug in 1, plug in 0. The answer here should probably be obvious. Anything to the, to the power of 1 is itself. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. Anything times 1 is itself. Um, anything times 0 is 0. Right, you guys see where I'm going with this. Anything plus 0 is itself, right? So there's all these very important properties of 1 and 0. Um, you want to plug in a positive number and a negative number. Don't pick anything fancy, negative 1 or negative 2, positive 2, because Oftentimes that causes opposite behavior, right? If you multiply something by negative, it becomes negative. So it just, it's, the magnitude's getting larger, but it's actually getting more, you know, it's getting like, it's the, in terms of a greater than relationship, it becomes less than. Does that make sense? It flips the sign, I guess. Um, sort of a weird way of putting that. Um, also, if you take something to a positive power, it gets bigger. If you take something to a negative power, it gets smaller, because it's going to a fraction. Um, we'll go over all that. Um, integers and fractions. So I wrote it as fractions. But very specifically what I mean is fractions between 0 and 1. I don't mean like 4 thirds, I mean like 1 third. And the reason is because they show opposite behavior. If you square a positive integer above 1, say 2, it gets bigger. You go to 4. If you square a fraction less than 1, it gets smaller. 0.5 squared, wait. Yeah, 0.5 squared is 0.25, right? Because it's half of a half. So you, again, you see sort of this divergent type behavior. Um, the last one, and this usually almost always only has to do if they actually ask you about odd or even, but it's odd and even numbers. These are rare. They can matter with things like powers where something to um, uh, something to an even power has two answers, something to an odd power only has one answer because it can't be negative, because it would be a negative times a negative times a negative, which would make it negative, right? Does that make sense? Um, there's a couple like rare instances like that, sort of unique cases where these matter. Or sometimes I'll ask you uneven questions, in which case uneven would be very, very important. Um, but if you've done these four, and notice it's pretty quick, and usually the information will eliminate at least one or two of the options, and odd and even we just generally don't care about that much. So again, very quickly it says, here's exactly the types of numbers you need to, you need to pick. And the reason they're nice is, because they're categorical. These are all the sort of unique categories. I mean, again, this is not, this doesn't cover 100% everything, but in like 99% of cases, this will cover everything. So just pick an easy number from the category. Positive two, negative two, you know, one half and two, and you know, one and zero. Something like that, you plug that in. If you see A is greater, A is greater, A is greater, well, A is probably greater. You know, take a step back and figure it out, but A is basically greater. Does that make sense? Love these numbers. They are super helpful. Um, and like I said, they're almost completely exhausted. So, yep, okay, so other helpful hints.